Good evening, and welcome to the Academy of St. Elizabeth virtually. Thank you for joining us for our open house webinar tonight. We will begin our program in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh, gracious and holy Father, bless all of us present this evening. Give us wisdom to perceive you, intelligence to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm Lynn Burek, Principal at the Academy of St. Elizabeth. All of us on this call tonight are happy to highlight for you what makes the Academy of St. Elizabeth such a wonderful place to learn and grow, a wonderful place to spend the most transformative years in a young woman's life. We are confident that you will get a glimpse tonight of how the Academy experience shapes our young women into confident, empowered, accomplished leaders. When asked what makes the Academy special, I always say it's the people that make this community what it is exemplary young women, outstanding teachers, devoted staff, committed and enthusiastic parents and alumni, all of whom you will meet this evening. We value academic rigor and challenge and offer innovative programming such as diverse enriching electives, college now, the opportunity to earn college credit while still in high school, and most important, our students love their school. The climate is one of warmth and acceptance. Our girls lift each other up and live the core values of our mission, charity, community, justice, service, and educational excellence. All of us here are ardent, believe ardently in this mission and want to share with you how special the Academy experience is and the role it plays in the academic, spiritual, and social emotional development of our students. Along with a top rate education, Academy students participate in a variety of activities related to academics, service, the arts, athletics, as well as equestrian. We are a Catholic school, but girls of all faiths are welcome in our community, as what's most important is we are committed to a values-based education. And as such, many of our extracurricular programs involve service, giving back, and helping those in need. Regarding the process to gain admission, please complete an application and follow the prompts on our website for submitting the necessary documentation from your school. As you may know, the Archdiocese is not offering the co-op exam, so we have waived an entrance exam. Your application will be complete when we receive your report card, teacher recommendations, and standardized test profiles. Information will be posted to the website regarding a merit scholarship test, most likely to be held early in December, for any student who wishes to be considered an Academy Merit Scholar. Please see the website for more information about our Merit Scholarship Program and qualifications. We are thrilled to showcase the Academy of St. Elizabeth experience tonight. During the program, please type any questions you may have in the chat and we will answer them at the end. Thank you for taking the time to get to know us better. We hope our program provides you with all the information you need to make a confident decision about your daughter's future and leaves you with an understanding of what makes our school special and unique. We hope that you apply very soon, gain acceptance, and ultimately join the Academy class of 2025. At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce our assistant principal, Lauren Corvo. Thank you, Mrs. Burek. This is my second year as the assistant principal, and I previously taught biology here for 15 years. I welcome you tonight to hear more about the Academy, a place that truly feels like home for me. We are so proud to say that we are in our seventh week of on-campus instruction, where our students are in the building full day, each and every day. Our talented and dedicated team works diligently to meet the demands required to keep this community well. A myriad of protocols and procedures are in place to safeguard our students and staff and to keep our doors open through the COVID-19 pandemic. Our COVID reentry and response team established over the summer is constantly evaluating information and refining our response almost daily. As you will hear from our students tonight, when our doors closed on a Friday last March, our continuous learning plan was in place and implemented that following Monday. We never missed a beat. The Academy community rallied 
and with great persistence, resilience, and teamwork, effectively met the needs of our students. I say this because it says so much about the professionalism and dedication of our team, many of whom you will meet this evening. We are deeply committed to our students and couldn't be more proud of our entire school community. Over the summer, we hired 14 new faculty to bring our student to teacher ratio to seven to one and ensure socially distanced classrooms could be set up. All of our classrooms are equipped with new state-of-the-art Promethean boards to enhance and engage student learning in the classroom, as well as successfully deliver instruction to students at home who have chosen our remote learning plan. Classes are often held outside on our spacious front lawn or new outdoor picnic area that is also utilized daily for lunch and club meetings. Finally, being able to remain open these last seven weeks would not have been possible without the guidance, support, and care of our new school nurse, a vital member of our team who I am now pleased to introduce. I welcome Mrs. Michelle Lowe. Thank you so much, Mrs. Corvo. My name is Michelle Lowe, and I am happy to say that I'm the new full-time nurse at St. E's. My background is primarily in women's health and in infertility. In addition to being a certified holistic nurse, I've also spearheaded many community-based healing events for my local parish. So St. E's definitely feels very much like home. I live locally. I have three children, all of whom have attended Catholic K through eight schooling, some of whom have continued to Catholic high schools and Catholic colleges. So I'm a big believer in a faith-based education. Our ultimate goal this year is to keep our school open and to provide the safest environment for our students and our staff. Given the current situation, it's certainly a challenge. We are fully aware that these are not normal times. There is additional stress on our students, on you as families and on the staff. In a community that values connection, it is also very important that we are not only physically safe, but that the girls feel emotionally safe as well. So how do we do this? Besides cleaning, cleaning and more cleaning. We have very concrete protocols and policies. We're obviously following the guidelines provided by the New Jersey Department of Health and the CDC. But additionally, we have a solid working relationship with Atlantic Health. Um, I text them, email them, and within five, 10 minutes, they're on the phone with me. So between those three sources, along with best clinical judgment and the comfort level of the administration, our policies are developed. They obviously will change as we learn more in order to keep us all safe. We also strictly monitor the reasons our students are absent. We track their symptoms and clearly communicate what's needed in order for them to safely return to school. Additionally, I have reached out to um, several other local student, uh, school nurses rather and formed kind of a group that communicates um, almost uh, daily. We discuss various situations that we may be seeing, we share resources and collaborate to determine best practices. Finally, I'd like to think of my that my staff, the students, the parents feel that I'm approachable and my door is always open. I think they know that they can come and discuss their concerns at any moment. Um, one of the things that makes my job um, much easier is the supportive administration here. They're willing to meet me to discuss any concerns immediately, any situation that comes to hand. They're always open for all the suggestions I offer. I can very honestly say that all of our decisions are made not only informatively, but out of love and concern. As a mom, I can tell you these girls are happy and it's never felt more right to have your children participating in a faith-based education. As a nurse, I can tell you it's a privilege to be a part of this staff and the Academy of St. Elizabeth's community. We hope to see your faces next year. I would now like the opportunity to introduce the co-chair of the Parent Association, Cindy Garrett. Thank you, Michelle. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cindy Garrett, and I'm here tonight to give you a brief overview of the Academy's Parents Association. I thought I would start tonight by telling you a little bit about myself. I have two daughters. My daughter Ashley graduated from the Academy last year, and my daughter Caitlin is currently a senior here at the Academy. I've been a member of the Parents Association for the past five years, and it has been a great way for me to connect with other parents, with students, and with the administration. The Parents Association supports and enhances the school community and our daughter's experiences here at the Academy in a variety of ways. 
Just to give you a little insight into some of the things that we do, we start off each year with an ice cream social event in August as a way to have our daughters connect with one another prior to the first day of school. We host a parents' night out for our academy parents to meet up and socialize. And our mother-daughter tea and father-daughter bowling events provide occasions for you as parents to spend quality time with your daughter and her friends. The Parents Association also works with various areas of the school. We work with many of our student groups throughout the year to host events such as our Thanksgiving luncheon with the Sisters of Charity, our annual Christmas tree lighting, and our day of service. We also collaborate with the development office and the business office throughout the year on fundraising events. During the fall, we have our $10,000 tuition raffle and our fall social event. In the spring, we help with our annual fashion show that highlights our graduating seniors. The money that the Parents Association raises from these events goes toward helping to make improvements to our school. As you will hear tonight, the Academy is a place that is rich with tradition and spirit. Being a part of the Parents Association has been a great way for me to be involved and to connect with such an amazing community of students, parents, faculty, and staff. And it has been a gift to be able to watch my daughters grow during their time here into independent and thriving young women. Should you and your daughter choose to attend the Academy in the future, I wish all the same for each of you. Thank you for listening to me tonight and enjoy your evening. Next, I would like to introduce an invaluable parent here at the Academy, Mark Hunter. Thank you, Cindy, I appreciate that. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for uh, tuning in tonight. Uh, my name is Mark Hunter, our daughter is Lulu, and my wife is Christine. Lulu is a junior at the Academy, and she is doing spectacularly well. Um, a little bit of a backstory, we adopted Lulu at the age of four. She came to us from China and has taken on such an ascension in her life that it's just a joy to be her dad. Um, she was in public school from K to four and then went to the school of St. Elizabeth here in Bernardsville from five to eight. So when we were considering high schools, we wanted to keep her in a faith-based education. It was very important to her. And she was really, really ascending and doing so well in the middle school here in town that we started looking around and we had some uh, people that we knew that, that were at the academy and we were very familiar with them and they all said wonderful things about it. We went to an open house and at that point, Lulu felt very, very comfortable. Uh, everyone was friendly. Everyone was relatable. Everyone was kind and it just felt like home. So for us, we wanted to know that Lulu was in a very special place where she would be accepted, welcomed, loved and would thrive. And at this point, where she is in her junior year, we could not be more proud of her accomplishments. The leadership of the school is outstanding. From Mrs. Burek uh, to Mrs. Corvo on down, everyone is very, very fantastic to deal with. The quality of the people at the school are great. From the parents, I'm also in the Parents Association, as Cindy said, I'm on the Beautification Committee, helping to enhance some of the nice things that we do at the school. And the atmosphere of the school is great. I really enjoy driving my daughter to school every day. I know this is kind of sentimental, but we chat on the way up each day and talk about like what the day is going to be ahead and what's going to be challenging and what's not. And to keep it short, we cross over those railroad tracks and we see the big dome in the school. And it's very sentimental to me as a father. And it really means a lot to know our daughter is thriving and going to a safe place that is engaging, inspiring, and launching her into just better things in the future. My name is Charlie Malone. Uh, my wife Kelly and I and our family uh, live in Florham Park. And while I'm here to provide my insights as a father of St. E's daughters, um, my story is not unique. Uh, it could easily be representative of any number of families here at St. E's. Our older daughter, Shannon, graduated from St. E's in 2019. We have a son, Connor, who is a junior at Seton Hall Prep, and our youngest, Tara, is in the back at the table uh, a month and a half into her first year here at St. E's. Let's use Shannon's experience as an example as to why Tara chose to attend St. E's, because the choice was Tara's last year. It was not automatic for Tara to follow in her older sister's footsteps. She made her own decision to be here, just as you are doing now. 
Shannon arrived here in 2015 and knew no one. All of her eighth grade friends went many different directions. She walked into the study hall two weeks before school started to meet her soccer teammates, and a senior approached her, took her under her wing, and there was no looking back. There was no second guessing. Because of the school's size, friendships extend beyond girls in just your same grade. Shannon went on to develop lifetime friendships, worked hard for strong academics, and led extracurriculars and charitable endeavors while she was here. Like others, Shannon hit her stride while she was at St. E's. Shannon is currently a sophomore accounting major at Fairfield University's Dolan School of Business on a Magis Scholarship, their highest academic award. She has dual majors in business analytics and business law, and she's been on the dean's list all semesters. St. E's prepared Shannon very well for a highly competitive college admissions process. She brought time management and study skills with her to college because of St. E's. Tara, our St. E's freshman, has already come home telling stories, making new friends, and even a train ride one stop away to Madison for lunch on the half day this past week. I would say at this point, Tara has become well acclimated and working hard on her studies too. You will hear from everyone here that this is a unique and special place. It is. The school's recent trajectory and what has been accomplished here only add to that. Here's the impression that I would leave upon you from a dad's perspective. Having been here over the past five years, talked to other parents, paid the tuition, watched my older daughter grow, become more independent and confident, and live the pillars of St. E's, and been involved myself, as Geraldine mentioned, as a parent in a few projects for the Parents Association. My summary to you, Mrs. Burek was hired as a new principal the same year my daughter started. She is terrific, has built a first-class team around her, and advanced this school to the next level. In five years, new teachers, administration, and staff, new wins in sports, teams competing at a higher level, more opportunities to lead service projects and pursue charitable endeavors, something that colleges look for. Successful reaccreditation by middle states evaluators, which is no small task for any school. New courses, new AP courses, new college credit courses, new physical changes. The Panther Den, the fitness center and wellness center downstairs was largely funded in 24 hours of giving by a cross section of academy stakeholders. New independent board of directors, appropriately and importantly, all women at the oldest all girls high school in New Jersey. Still strong ties to the Sisters of Charity, incredible traditions for the students and a legacy dating back 160 years, but the vibrancy of today. On top of that, the place looks like Hogwarts. Every student here uh, genuinely wants to be here. It's not punishment for the girls. The girls wanted something special for their high school experience and found it here at St. E's. St. E's, with a total enrollment of around 200, went out and hired 14 new teachers this summer to bring the student to teacher ratio down even further to seven to one. That's incredible to think of considering where the school was five years ago. The upward trajectory at St. E's is nothing but positive and amazing. It's been impressive to watch and to be a small part of in a time when other Catholic schools are unfortunately not doing so well. The minute you walk in, Ms. Walsh and others are preparing for you to leave for college. As a dad, here's the proof statement to me every year when someone asks me, okay, beyond everything Shannon did at St. E's, was it worth it? Look at the incredible list of college acceptances every year. It's something that I like to do. And the scholarship money to the graduating class each year. Last year, 51 St. E's graduates were awarded $11.4 million in four-year scholarship money. That's an average of almost $225,000 per graduate. Now, you, can't attend, you can only attend one college, so not all of that money is utilized but all of it has been offered at the collegiate level. Colleges are competing for the type of student St. E's is producing. 
if you want to go to the next level, it's great to know that colleges believe in what is happening here too. If I have a minute for an added story, I just add that in Shannon's junior year, Charlie Dickinson University down the road was offering a pre-college program in law. I suggested this as a father, and we all know how that goes over with your younger daughters, right? I said, humor me as a dad, hear me out on this and sign up for this summer camp. Explore a potential career path while you're at it. Here's the feedback from Shannon. Day one, well, dad, we had known us for lunch. It was really good. And by the way, it's weird to have boys in the classroom for the first time in three years, a part that I had largely overlooked. Day two, she reports, we learned about liability and neglect, and we're going to have a mock trial at the end of the week. I said, that's terrific. Day three, she comes home. How was it, Shannon? She said, we were split into prosecution and defense. I was assigned to the defense, she says. But too many people want to be the lawyers. So the boys in the group decided they should be the attorneys and the girls would be the witnesses. My daughter, Shannon, interjected, stood up for herself and the other girls and said, that's not fair. In a classroom with boys for the first time in three years, she asserted herself and stood up for equitable treatment of women. St. Eve's gave her the confidence and the independent thinking to do that. This then became the topic of her college admissions essay. All of what I've told you now is terrific. It all comes from the perspective of a dad. I realize my credibility is lost to half of this room. I am now gonna hand over to sen uh, senior Gina Petruziello, who is living the St. E's experience and by far carries a lot more credibility than I do. So welcome, Gina. Good afternoon, everybody. It's, I think we can officially go with the good afternoon now, it's looking like. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know this is a, as I'm sure you've probably heard everywhere you went, this is a very deeply unusual time to be exploring high school options. So I'm really glad to see you all today, especially because when I was first considering high school, so much of what drew me to St. Nese happened here at this open house. I had an older brother at Seton Hall Prep, so I knew I wanted a Catholic school, but as I'm sure you're all aware, there's absolutely no shortage of options in the area. What set the academy for me, what set the academy apart for me was the people I met at our open house. Of course, my parents love the academics, the convenient train access, and the religious basis of the school, but as an eighth grader, that's not what I was thinking about. I was thinking about the kind of girls I'd be spending the next four years with. At my first open house, I realized academy girls were not just the kind of people I liked. They were the kind of people I wanted to be like. They were friendly, they were humorous, they were smart, and they cared about what they were doing. To me, making that choice was easy as could be. However, what's more important about my academy experience is not what first brought me here, it's what kept me here. What kept me here at the academy was the actual experience of being a student. One thing that's really, really valuable to me about my academy experience is that my class sizes, especially as a senior, are so small and I'm so close with everyone in my class that going to class is almost like hanging out with friends, except we're talking about Maya Angelou or chemistry. <laughs> uh, a day at the academy evolves getting here early. I usually say it's to catch up on work, but it's mostly just to see my friends. Each day starts how this morning did with a prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. And then it's off to classes in freedom, power, and political crises, my college history class. My three classmates and I debate whether or not we actually like Socrates based on last night's reading from Plato. In AP Biology, one of my larger classes, we present our cell organelle speed dating profiles to go more in depth with what we were learning the day before. No matter what we're doing or where we are, Academy girls feel comfortable and at home in our classes. Lunch this year, I spend either in my homeroom or in my study hall with the whole grade. Especially going to school now in this stressful time, having the space to be safely distanced, take off your masks, and spend a little time with your friends is really valuable. After that, it's back to class. And after school, academy girls head just about wherever you could imagine. Some girls go to sports, some girls go to volunteering opportunities, some girls head off to jobs. No matter how many individual difficulties and stresses there are throughout the day, tests or quizzes or presentations, there's always a feeling that girls at the academy are working towards a common goal, to uplift each other and to succeed. That's why when I received the notification in March that the Academy would be moving online indefinitely, frankly, I was crushed. 
I didn't want to lose a minute of my dwindling time with my classmates or in the classroom of my favorite teachers. Luckily, however, the faculty here at St. E's worked so hard for the students to make sure we were still getting the academy experience we love. Academically, our teachers and guidance counselors were extremely accepted, receptive to our needs and our many, many anxieties. My teachers were excellent about shifting to the online format, and I never felt like I was missing out in terms of academics. What was truly impressive to me, though, and what makes St. E's what it is, was the Academy's effort to maintain our traditions. We still hosted our senior fashion show that Mrs. Kilgore mentioned in the virtual format, and the Parents Association was kind enough to organize a drive-by, where underclassmen decorated posters, made signs, brought gifts, and drove by the houses of local seniors so they could still be together, in a sense, on their important day. To me, this is what sets the Academy apart. No matter the circumstance, this is a community that cares about its girls more than test scores, more than grades, more than percentiles. It cares about us as people. This is a community that nurtures us, loves us, and wants to see us succeed. I'm so glad I chose the Academy all those years ago, and thank you all for giving it a chance. Hi everyone, my name is Mia DeTrolio. I am a senior here at the Academy, as well as the student body president. While I wish that I could, could have seen all your faces in person today, I'm so grateful that we have the technology that we do that allows us to meet virtually. Choosing a high school for yourself or your daughter is a major decision. With that being said, we all want to put our best foot forward. High school is a, high school is a time of growth, both academic and moral. I attended a college information session this past weekend here in Morristown, and the representative had me ask myself two questions that really made me think. One, what do you want to get out of your academic program? And two, who do you want to go to school with? I want to briefly discuss these two points as I feel they are critical in deciding where to attend high school. First, what do you want to get out of your academic program? At the academy, you are pushed to your maximum potential every single day. The Academy recognizes the value of a transdisciplinary curriculum, so you will have the opportunity to take unique courses in a variety of fields, consequently allowing you to discover new areas of interest. For example, during my sophomore year, I took a class entitled AP Government and Politics. Prior to this course, I had no knowledge and, to be quite honest, no interest in politics. However, the course exposed me to aspects of government that go far beyond what we see on the television screen during a presidential debate. I learned how to think critically and consider multiple perspectives in order to develop a solution that is representative of a, of a majority. As I am now in the midst of my college application journey, I am looking to study consumer, consumer behavior in relation to business after high school in order to assist companies in propelling their sales. Through analyzing political perspectives, I realized that I was fascinated by public surveying in general. And this is merely one example, but it just goes to show how the Academy fosters an environment of academic exploration. Now to the point that no one wants to talk about, COVID-19. Parents, I know that this is a huge factor in determining where to send your daughter to high school. So I want to state it very clearly that you are in the best hands here at the Academy of St. Elizabeth. Mrs. Burek, Mrs. Corvo, and the entire faculty worked so hard all summer to ensure that we are able to return to school full time and in a safe manner. Students here are held to a very high standard of responsibility. With that being said, we've all been very diligent with regard to wearing masks, social distancing, cleaning our areas, etc. I also want to note that Saney's did a phenomenal job with regard to virtual learning. We were required to log in every single day with our cameras on and actively participate in four full length classes per day. Not once throughout the experience did I feel that I was falling behind in my academic endeavors because the teachers made themselves available every day for one on one video conferencing. Like I said before, we are held to a very high standard here. We had just as much work, we still had to study, and we were still required to collaborate with our peers for group work. And while there were some days I just wanted to sleep in an extra hour, I'm so thankful that I was pushed during that period of isolation. Juxtaposing my experience to my younger brothers who would literally type here in the chat box and roll over and go back to bed, solidified the notion that Sanies goes above and beyond to make sure that we are consistently learning and growing, even in the most unusual of circumstances. Before I pass the screen on, I always like to note why I chose to come to the Academy. I attended public school my whole life and I honestly had a great experience there. 
but I've always been someone who seeks change and loves meeting new people. So I shadowed the academy and actually enrolled that same night. Though it was a bit of culture shock at first, I think that the thing that shaped me the most over my four years here is the fact that it is an all girls institution. There is no fear in presenting in front of the class or focusing on what we look like. Instead, we pay attention to the things that actually matter in life, good character, moral responsibility, and hard work. If you told me in eighth grade that I would be speaking before a crowd like I am right now, I would probably laugh in your face. I'm speaking here this evening because Sainis has instilled me with the self-confidence and courage to take initiative and be a leader. And this can be you. So to answer that second question, who do you want to go to school with? I want you to envision yourself as a sister here at the Academy of St. Elizabeth. The friends you make will become family. You will always be supported and you will make memories that will last a lifetime. Today's sisters are tomorrow's leaders. Coming here was the best decision I've ever made. And I hope that by the end of the presentation tonight, you will be able to make that same decision. I tend to avoid making promises, but this is an exception. You will not regret it. I'm the athletic director at the Academy. We are very happy to not only be able to successfully run our athletic programs during the pandemic, but also be expanding our programs and our offerings. We have roughly 78% of our student body who participates in athletics in varying levels. They participate in the New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association, the New Jersey Independent School Athletic Association, the Northwest Jersey Athletic Conference, and the North Jersey Interscholastic Girls Lacrosse League. We have 11 varsity programs and five JV uh, programs as well. Our fall offerings include cross country, which is a co-op with Morris Catholic, with Morris Catholic being the host team. We offer field hockey, which is a co-op with Morris Catholic, with the academy being the host team. Soccer, tennis, and volleyball. Our winter sports include basketball, ice hockey, which is one of our uh, new sports that was added this year, which is a co-op with Morris Catholic, with Morris Catholic being the host team, and swimming. Our spring sports include lacrosse, softball, and track and field. We also offer uh, the first and longest running equestrian program in the state. Our teams practice on our shared fields with this uh, St. Elizabeth Academy, or I'm sorry, St. Elizabeth University, except for our swim team, which practices at Fairleigh Dickinson University. All of our fields are a short walk from the academy. Our coaches bring years of experience uh, to the practice fields and develop engaging workouts through various team building and sport specific skill building drills. If you have any questions about specific sports uh, that we offer, please feel free to find my email on our website and reach out to me. Thank you for uh, your interest in the Academy of St. Elizabeth, and I hope to see you in the fall. I would now like to introduce uh, Dr. Kimberly Bourne of our religion department. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you also to the students and parents and families who are attending this evening. My name is Kimberly Bourne and I'm a teacher within the religious studies department at the Academy of St. Elizabeth. In the religious studies department, we embrace the charism of the Sisters of Charity with a very sincere desire to meet the spiritual needs of the young women we teach. I have to say, this is my first year here and the girls are just amazing as are all of the teachers. Everyone gives so much. In the religious studies department, we seek to guide each student as they embark on their personal journey of experiencing the good news. We offer a curriculum that places a strong emphasis on the role of women in society and their role and value within the church. In addition to the courses we teach, we also offer a campus ministry program with monthly masses, specialized prayer services, and retreats. In November, we'll be having two school-wide retreats focusing on the gifts we receive in the world and those gifts that we bring to the world as well. These retreats and services are run by the Liturgy Club students 
and also the liturgy team. Together, we also work with many departments in the school to incorporate the arts, languages, and the talents of many different people. In addition, we also weave service projects into the curriculum and throughout many of the clubs on campus. Our ultimate goal is to enhance the student's education, to deepen their compassion for the world, and to nourish them in mind, body, and spirit. I'll just give a brief overview of some of the courses that we offer. So our freshmen take a course called Scripture. This course enables them to explore the roots of the Christian faith uh, manifested in the Old Testament, also in the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles. In addition, they focus on daily prayer so that they can see how that this can continue to strengthen their own personal journey and their daily life. Sophomores take social justice uh, in 10th grade. This course focuses on the complexities of contemporary life and how we arrive at the point of always doing the right thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating course. Uh, the relationship between the guidelines um, of our Christian faith, the commandments, works of mercy, Catholic social teaching, Beatitudes, and sacred scripture. The juniors uh, take world religions, and here they explore the origins, the beliefs, principles, doctrine, and worship practices of each religion. The beliefs, doctrines, rituals, and practices of the Catholic Church and also several Christian denominations are also explored. Juniors can take a, um, also can take a course called the Children of Abraham. For this course, this is a college now course and they receive four college credits at St. Elizabeth University. Here they study the faith traditions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and learn about the core beliefs of each, their scriptures, and the historical and social context of each community of faith. Our seniors take bioethics, where they explore the various innovations in technology that have contributed significantly to our present quality of life, but have also brought with them some significant, significant moral challenges uh, for Christians. This course is particularly interesting during the time of COVID, where we are exploring many uh, ethical situations. Our seniors could also take a New Testament honors course, which is also a college course. This also gives them four college credits at the St. At St. Elizabeth University. This course explores the historical foundations of the New Testament, and it helps students examine key foundational issues in the New Testament, as well as helping them understand the text and interpret the text in a responsible way. Thank you again for taking the time to be with us tonight. I hope that this will be helpful, and I hope that you'll have a chance to come visit us it is an amazing place and the girls are really tremendous. You can't help but be inspired when you spend time with them. So we look forward to seeing you soon at the Academy of St. Elizabeth. In the meantime, I will now turn the program over to Mr. Greg Yarnell, who is a teacher in our social studies department. Thank you. Hey everybody, thanks for visiting us tonight. My name is Greg Yarnell, and I teach the advanced placement uh, history and government classes here at the Academy. Uh, in addition, I teach a dual enrollment course on freedom in conjunction with St. Elizabeth's University, some electives and a section of freshman world history. So there's a good chance I might see you in the classroom next year. I'd like to talk to you a little bit tonight about how we do history classes here at the Academy. To be completely honest, it's probably about more than just history. At the Academy, our liberal arts college uh, courses cover an eclectic group of subjects. In your four years here, you'll take world history and US history, but you'll also have the opportunity to take a wide range of courses studying anything from criminal justice to Holocaust studies to media literacy. 
We have AP classes and dual enrollment college credit classes, as well as many semester electives, some of, which, some of which were created directly from student requests. It's a whole array of subjects, but in the end, it really all comes down to you. We want to know what you think. Humanities classes here aren't spent memorizing names or filling out photocopied worksheets. I try to keep to the mantra of if you can Google it, probably doesn't need to be a question on a test. In class, we do the same thing that all your parents do. We look at data and we figure out what it means. Yes, we read a lot of words, but we also look at maps and pictures, art, movie, all sorts of things. And we ask, what's going on here? Why do some things succeed where other things fail? We try to figure out why things happen. It's the skill that leads to all other skills. And it's how I support the claim that history just might be the most important class you'll take here at the academy. You really can't become a scientist, work in technology, be an engineer or mathematician if you don't learn how to state your opinion and defend it with concrete reasoning. Consider the photograph you see on the screen, not the ones of me and some of my senior students discussing Plato. You now the black and white one there in the middle comes from an exercise I do with my freshman students called What's Going On in This Picture, run by the Learning Network on the New York Times website. Each week they publish one photograph without a caption and my students are among hundreds from around the world who set to the task of creating a response, trying to analyze exactly what it is they're looking at. When did it happen? Who are these kids anyway? Why is one of them wearing a box on their head? It's learning without a net. And you can't say you can't you can't say my answer is correct because I found it on page 47 in the textbook. There is no answer until they publish the actual caption later in the week. It's these sort of unknowns that we explore every day in class. And sure, it might seem hard at first. Certainly, it would be easier just to memorize a list of terms. And many first year students often say, but wait, that's just my opinion. That can't be the right answer. I know mean, sometimes sometimes you get the wrong answer and that's OK, too. Because sometimes being wrong allows us <clears throat> allows us to find um, the things we need to find to get to the summit and to really learn the lessons we need to reach it. Over four years, I see young women figure it out each and every day. They come to realize that it's not really their opinion they're sharing; it's their voice. It's the voice of a strong, confident young woman, and it's the that I, it's, excuse me. It's the reason I see. And I've been here all these years, and I see those confident young women graduate from the academy each day, uh, each year. Um, and it's the reason why I keep coming back to this institution each time. It's a, it's a great family here. Um, the kids are spectacular. The two you'll hear, the second one you'll hear tonight is just as great as the first. Um, and I'll let you move on to the next part now. Thanks for coming by. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague, Maureen Brady of the English Department. Hi, I'm Maureen Brady, and I'm an English teacher at Academy of St. Elizabeth, and I'm excited to talk to you today about our English program. Our program is focused on critical reading and writing, and of course, the development of your critical thinking. Critical thinking is crucial to any path that you take in life, so we want to well equip our students. And of course, you can take advanced placement courses, stick with college prep, or stick with honors. We also offer digital publishing. One of the publications that we do is the yearbook. Students get some real world experience there. They learn, most importantly, how to collaborate with other people. There's really a, a plethora of ways to go with English at our school, and whatever choice you make, I do think that you'll have a wonderful experience. My experience watching our girls is that it's a very tight group. They're very supportive of one another and you make a lot of lifelong friends that go on way past Saney's, past college, uh, into your professional life. It also serves as a wonderful network for your professional life. So. That was a little, just a little glimpse of what I would like you to know about St. Elizabeth's from, from my corner of the school. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. My name is Elena Amaris, and this is my seventh year as a member of the science department at the Academy. 
Uh, I teach AP chemistry, uh, as well as a variety of science electives, including forensic science and advanced forensic science. And I just wanna take some time to introduce you to some of our course offerings and electives. Uh, we require uh, three years of a science and the natural progression of courses is biology, chemistry, and physics. Uh, these courses are offered at the college preparatory level as well as the honors level. And for students who wish to pursue science at the collegiate level, we also offer AP Biology, AP Chemistry, and AP Physics upon request. Um, even though we require our students to take three years of a science, many of our students graduate with four or even more years depending on their schedule uh, and their interest. And that's mainly due to our extensive STEM uh, elective, elective courses, excuse me. Uh, so our STEM courses are semester courses and they were really designed with student interest in mind. Um, some of our electives offered at the freshman and sophomore level are computer programming, uh, web design, engineering, forensic science. Um, all of our STEM uh, electives were really designed with the same goal in mind. And that is providing students with hands-on experience uh, to solve problems in the real world. And this can be seen on a daily basis, whether it's you know, our engineering students constructing bridges or building catapults and bottle rockets, um, or we see it in our forensic science classes where our students analyze you know, mock crime scenes and collect evidence. Um, we really think that it's important to incorporate these critical thinking skills in all of our STEM, all of our STEM courses. Um, we also provide our students with opportunities to hear from people in the STEM field. Uh, for example, uh, the Advanced Forensic Science Elective uh, that we offer junior and senior year um, gives our students an opportunity to watch a live stream forensic, forensic autopsy, which is run through the St. Louis Medical School Adventures in Medicine program. Um, so we encourage our students to ask questions and we really do welcome individual thought because in the STEM field, there are always multiple ways to solve problems. Uh, we really strive to make our STEM classes meaningful, but also keeping them fun um, and challenging. So we hope to see you in some of these electives next year. Um, all of our courses can be found in our course catalog online. Uh, and at this point, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Mrs. Nita Prasad, who is also a member of our STEM department. Greetings from the Mathematics Department at the Academy. I'm Nita Prasad, one of the faculty members and the advisor to the National Honor Society. It has been joyful and rewarding experience for me to see the girls at the Academy rise to their potential through hard work, focus and determination. Our goal at the Math Department is to develop a solid conceptual understanding, challenge the students at an appropriate level and develop the critical thinking and reasoning skills. We are well aware of the fact that students have different love-hate relationship with math and our effort is to engage all. Hands-on learning, graphical explorations, virtual manipulatives, athletic simulations and real-life applications all add variety to our lessons and keep the students engaged in this at the same time. Teachers and students work together as a team and our dedicated efforts always bring good results, as is evident from the excellent AP Calculus AV exam results. I have much to share and I can keep going on, but would conclude with a quote by Albert Einstein, which relates to our efforts in providing meaningful learning experience to the students. Education is not the learning of facts, but training the mind to think. I wish you and your families all the very best and hope to see your daughters in the classrooms of the academy. Good luck and thank you. Thank you, Ms. Prasad. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm so happy to see all of you guys here. As Ms. Prasad said, my name is Danielle Silverman and I'm a senior here at the academy. When I first toured the academy, I immediately knew it was my home. The environment was so welcoming and inviting. In my opinion, this environment is the best thing about the academy. The girls, teachers, and staff are all incredibly supportive and kind people and will support you no matter what. When I started as a freshman, I had no idea that I would become the student council vice president at the end of my four years. I had the biggest fear of talking in front of people and always let other people take on lead roles in my school and community. However, with the encouragement of my peers, I ran for class officer sophomore year and now I'm vice president. In addition to my involvement in student council, I have gotten involved in multitudes of clubs here at the academy, 
such as the Operation Smile Club, Kind Campaign, Spanish Club, and Baking Club. As you can see, there are so many diverse clubs and groups for all of your interests. These clubs are so much fun because you get to explore other interests and connect with other girls at the academy that you might not have before. Not only do a lot of girls get involved with these clubs, but they use the small size of the academy to their advantage when it comes to sports. Because of our small size, girls are able to try out for sports that they have never tried before and get a chance at making varsity by the end of their four years. During my sophomore year, for example, I tried out for the field hockey team. Before this, I had never picked up a field hockey stick in my life. And at the end of the year, I had time in varsity games. On the flip side of this, I'm a current member of the academy swim team. I've been a swimmer my entire life, and I was able to help other girls on the team that did not know how to swim. One of the biggest takeaways from this team will not be making finals at any of my championship meets, but rather watching girls that I taught how to do flip turns at the beginning of our seasons go best times in her events. This special environment of the academy also has had an impact on the academic experience that students have. Girls are encouraged to work hard and aim high in every aspect of their lives. This is seen not only through underclassmen years, but also as one begins to apply for college and senior year. Many of my friends and I have become confident in ourselves over the years and are applying to Ivy Leagues and other top universities throughout the country. These goals and reaches would not be possible without the encouragement of our friends, teachers, and counselors. If you take anything away from this virtual session today, know that the environment of the academy is one like no other. The support that you get from everyone here will be unmatched anywhere else you may go. Over the course of the four years here, you will become more confident in yourself, explore new interests, and most importantly, find your voice for the years to come. Thank you for listening, and I would like to introduce Mish Walsh, our Director of Counseling, to present her presentation. Thank you so much, Danielle. And I wanna welcome you all to our virtual open house tonight. This is actually your last official stop on the tour. Um, my name, as Danielle said, is uh, Beth Ellen Walsh. I am the Director of Counseling. I have been at the Academy, I just did the math as we're sitting here and I'm in my 23rd year at the Academy. And I will echo what I think you've heard already is um, the reason why we stay here is because it is such an amazing, place to be, and that is in a large part to the students. Uh, you've met two of our young ladies tonight, but I would wanna tell you that um, they're just two of the many. Um, I think if we picked uh, mostly any student to speak to you tonight, they would echo what you already heard. Um, in our counseling department, we have, with just under 200 students, we have two full-time counselors, um, and we both employ an open door policy so our students can stop in and see us whenever they feel the need to do so. Uh, we work closely with our students, with the teachers, with parents, and with the, um, the whole academy staff to ensure that we're addressing the academic, the social and emotional needs of our students, uh, especially now with everything going on with the COVID pandemic. Um, just as an example, we're always revamping what we're doing with our students. Uh, we redid our physical education curriculum this past year to uh, employ more fitness and wellness program. So that in addition to addressing the physical needs of our students, we're also addressing their emotional needs. Uh, they're doing mindfulness, they're, they're doing yoga. Uh, we meet with the uh, physical fitness instructor periodically to go over where we need to address particular needs of our students. For instance, we're doing peer advisory, we're doing group counseling with them, we're having speakers come in to talk to them about dealing with um, uh, current and worthwhile topics. Uh, we do use Naviance, which is a college and career readiness program. So our students starting in freshman year can start to look at different uh, career interests they might have and start to explore some colleges that might fit their needs for when they become uh, juniors and seniors applying to college. Um, I do work very closely with our students. I work primarily with the 11th to 12th graders and um, I help them with their college choices. I help them with their applications. Uh, we review their supplements, review their essays and that kind of thing. And um, I even actually help them submit their application. Just you know, take an example, Danielle, who you just met, she and I met this morning before school. We sent in two or three of our applications together. I think it's important for them to have that support, um, just somebody to tell them that this application is perfect and you can press that button. So I'm happy to be there to provide that support for them. Um, 
As a college prep school, our minimum requirements surpass most college entry requirements. Um, and you can reference our requirements on the profile that was sent to you. But I just wanna highlight a few things. Um, we currently offer 12 AP courses and AP is program supported by College Board where the students take a course here. And in May, they're, take, they're, take, they're given a standardized test and it scored anywhere from one to five. Um, if students score three or better on that test, Typically, colleges will give them credit for having taken the course at the high school level. Um, last, this past spring, as point of reference, just under 85% of our students did score three or better on their exams. So uh, odds are they'll get credit for taking that courses at the high school level. Um, I had a student, I wanna say about three years ago, she took seven AP courses and based on her scores, Lafayette College awarded her 21 credits before she even walked in the door. So I think uh, parents probably in particular can appreciate that. Um, you might have heard reference to our College Now program. Uh, since we share the campus with the St. Elizabeth University, we currently offer six courses that the students can sign up for beginning in junior year. And they can elect to take up to 16 credits, transferable credits through the College of St. Elizabeth. Um, we, like I said, we currently offer six courses, but we're always looking to expand our course offerings. Uh, we offer them right now in the English department, in theology, and in um, history. Okay. Um, one thing I want to, just want to refer to some of the pictures you might see on your screen. Um, on the left, you'll see our um, scholarship information for last year's graduating class. Um, on the profile, you'll see the colleges our students were accepted to over the last few years, but you'll see that the 51 students who graduated last year, and that is them in their beautiful white dresses and white gloves and masks, because it was the class of 2020, um, they were awarded just about $11.4 million in merit-based scholarships. This is merit-based. This is not need-based scholarship money. And one of our fathers broke it down and that's just about $224,000 per student, which is pretty impressive. I've had parents tell me that um, they're paying less for college than they paid for the uh, Academy of St. Elizabeth tuition. So I think in some ways an academy education pays for itself monetarily and in many other ways also. Hey Jenny, school's pretty great. Do you want to be my friends? Hey Victoire, Ali, Lulu. I'm talking to my friend Jenny. She's interested in St. E's. You'll love it. It's really welcoming. It's so nice here. You see? Oh, class is about to start. I'll send more later. Jenny, meet one of my favorite teachers, Mrs. Amraz. What's your favorite part about teaching here? My favorite part about teaching here is that I get to show my students how to use critical thinking skills to answer difficult chemistry problems. Thanks, Mrs. A. But for real, all the teachers here make learning really fun. So true. I'm taking a dance class this year and I love it. There are so many cool activities here. And if there isn't a club you're interested in, you can always start a new one. Honestly, it's nerve-wracking going to a new school, but not at St. E's. The teachers and students are so welcoming and kind. It makes it so much easier. These girls are like my sisters. We're practically family. And when you start, I can help you. That's what we're all about here. I really hope you join us. I can't wait to meet you. Yeah.